who is Jesus? I have a special friend. Let me tell you about him. His name is Jesus. Long, long ago, before there was a world or a star or even a sky, there was Jesus. Together with God, his Father, and God the Spirit, Jesus made the world. He made all the big trees and the tiny flowers and all the animals, the funny rhinoceros, and the gentle puppy. God made the sky and everything in it. Then God made people, a man and a woman. The man and woman loved each other, and together they loved God. Jesus loved them too. He walked and talked with them every day. But one day, the man and the woman did something wrong. They did not obey God. That is sin. Because God is holy, he could no longer walk and talk with them. So the man and woman had to leave the beautiful place. God had made the place God had made for them. After that, they worked hard digging up stones and briars to plant seeds for food. They were often tired and hungry. They had children and their children sinned too. But God still loved them and he promised that one day he would send someone to take sin away. Thousands of years passed, the world filled with people. They all sinned, but over and over God sent men called prophets to remind the people of that special someone who would make them once again right with God. Then Jesus came. God sent his own son to earth, not as a powerful king, but as a tiny baby. God gave Jesus a mother named Mary, but God was his father. Jesus grew inside Mary's tummy, just like other babies. He was born like other babies. God knew that Jesus would need a daddy to take care of him while he was growing up. So Mary's husband, Joseph, became his adopted daddy. I like my family. I'm glad Jesus had a family too. Mary and Joseph had to take a long trip to Bethlehem just before Jesus was born. When they got there, Jesus looked hard for a place, I'm sorry, Joseph looked hard for a place to sleep. But the town was crowded with other travelers. There was no room left. Finally, they found a cave where cows and donkeys stayed. That night, Jesus was born. Mary wrapped her new baby in warm cloths and laid him in a manger to sleep. Later that night, something wonderful happened in a field not far from Bethlehem. Shepherds were watching their sheep. Suddenly, a bright light filled the sky and angels appeared. They told the shepherds that Jesus, the Savior God, had promised long ago was now born. They even told the shepherds where they could find him in the nearby town. Then the angels shouted praises to God and disappeared into heaven. The shepherds hurried to see the new baby. They were Jesus' first visitors. Jesus grew up like other boys in his town. He studied God's word, the Old Testament Bible. He visited God's house, the temple. He obeyed his parents. He learned to build with wood because that was his adopted daddy's job. So Jesus became a carpenter. I wonder if Jesus liked to work with his daddy. I do. Because Jesus was like other children, he had feelings just like I do. He felt happy when he played with pebbles in the warm sun. He felt sad when friends were mean to him. When he fell down and skinned his knees, they hurt just like mine. But Jesus was also different from other boys. He was God. He never sinned. Even when Satan, God's greatest enemy, came to Jesus and tried to talk him into doing wrong, Jesus said no. He remembered what he had studied in the Bible, and that helped him say no to Satan. Jesus grew to be a man. Then he looked like other men in his part of the world. 
There, most men had light brown skin and dark hair. They grew their hair and beards long. They wore long, loose robes to protect them from the sun and sandals to make it easier to walk over the sandy soil. Jesus walked hundreds of miles, so he may have carried a walking stick to help him when he got tired. Probably, he wrapped a wet turban around his head to keep him cool on scorching, sunny days. For three years, Jesus walked up and down his country. He crossed sandy deserts and climbed rocky hills. He traveled across lakes in a small boat. He visited small towns, big cities, and wild, empty places in the country. Everywhere, people followed him. The people wanted Jesus to teach them, so he taught them what he knew from studying the Bible. But he also taught them more. Jesus was God's son. He had lived with God, his father, since before the world began. So Jesus taught the people to know God. He taught them how to pray to God and how to please God. And he taught them how to live together without hurting each other. Once, more than 5,000 people followed Jesus to a lonely place to hear him teach. The people were tired and hungry from the walk. Look at all those people. Jesus felt sorry for them. Maybe he was tired and hungry too. He asked if anyone had food to share. Only one small boy brought his lunch to Jesus. Jesus prayed, thanking his father for the food. Then slowly he began to break the boy's bread and fish into small pieces. And the most amazing thing happened. More and more pieces came from the boy's lunch. But Jesus did not run out of food. Jesus' friends passed out the bread and fish to the people. They all ate until they were full, even the little boy. Even then the food was not gone. Twelve baskets were left over. I wonder how that boy felt when he saw his lunch feeding so many people. I wonder if he knew that Jesus had made the whole world so it would be no trouble to make his lunch into a little extra food. Sometimes sick people crowded around Jesus and he helped them. Jesus made clay for a man who couldn't see from the time he was a baby. He put it on the man's eyes. When the man washed his eyes, he could see. Friends carried a man who couldn't move at all to see Jesus. Jesus spoke to him, and the man picked up his mat and walked away. A woman who had been sick for 12 years touched Jesus' clothing, and Jesus made her well. A 12-year-old girl died. Jesus came to her house and brought her back to life. Once a group of children came to Jesus. His friends told the children that Jesus was tired and they should go away. But Jesus reached out his arms to them and took them on his lap. I'm glad Jesus takes time for children because I need a lot of time. But not everyone loved Jesus. Bad men were afraid of him because they did not want to change their lives to please God. They were afraid of the big crowds who followed Jesus. So they made up lies and they made up lies about Jesus and told those lies to the governor. Together they decided that Jesus must die. So soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to a cross. That was the way they killed people who disobeyed important laws. But Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. Because he is God, he could have come down from the cross if he had wanted to, but he didn't. I am sad when I think about how Jesus died, but I am thankful too because he did it for me. You see, every person in the world has done wrong, even me. Sometimes no one sees my sin. Like the time I took my sister Ruth's candy and hid it in my closet. But God knows. And my sin makes him sad. It makes me sad too. I thought of the other things I had done wrong. And I worried that God would punish me. 
Then I remembered, that's why Jesus died. He took the punishment for my sin, so I prayed, Jesus, I'm sorry I did wrong. Thank you for taking my punishment. I want to be yours from now on. And God forgave me. I am his child forever and ever. I knew Jesus would want me to give Ruth back her candy, so I did before she asked.